we're looking at Glemco Accelerated Math Lesson 9-1, which is on functions. So the first thing that we have to figure out is what is a function? And a function is simply this. A function is a rule. If this is true, or if we have this information, then we should expect this. So if we had a function and it can look, it looks like an equation. So if our function was 3x plus 4, and if x equals 1, then the function when x equals 1 is 7. So if x equals 1, then the solution is 7. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. It's a rule. It's what happens. But sometimes in real life, data exists so that when you say one thing, two thing, there are two possible outcomes. And unfortunately, when that happens, that's not a function. So we call that the domain and the range. The domain is our set of x values. So what can we expect? What can we put in? What is our independent variable? That is my domain. My range is what we get out of the function. If the same domain matches with two ranges, then the rule doesn't work. That would be like saying that if one student doesn't turn in their homework, then they get 100 on it. But if another student doesn't turn in their homework, they get a zero. Can I do that? No. no. That doesn't work. That rule doesn't work. The same thing works in math. If this happens, then this has to be the result. You can't have two different results for the same input. Does that make sense? We might have seen these before, and we called them input-output tables. Have you guys heard of those? Input-output tables? Okay, Kind of monotonous, but also kind of fun because they're monotonous. Yes, no, maybe. No. No, no, not fun, or no, we've never heard of them. No, not fun. Never heard of them. Okay. Monotonous means you do the same thing over and over and over again. Okay. So, if we look at the information on page 384, it shows a function where 2 matches with 1, and 4 matches with 3, and 5 matches with 4, and 9 matches with 7. For each domain, there is only one range value. They each only partner up to one thing. That's a function. That works. We also have an example that is not a function because that domain value of 2 matches with both 1 and 3. You can't do that. You can't do that. So because that one domain matched with two range values, that means it's not a function. Okay? Today what we're looking at in this lesson is looking at, is this a function, yes or no? We don't have to do too much to it, we're just saying, is it a function, okay? So if we look at example one. In example 1A, we're given, and you're going to have to actually look in your book today, okay? Not a lot of... No, write down what Ms. Blum does on the board today. A lot of today is looking at what we're given and making a decision. Okay? So, if we look at page 384, example 1A, we're given a list of ordered pairs. 54, 112, 56, 130, 55, 145, 54, 123, 56, 128. 384. So, is this a function, yes or no? What do you think? Yes. Raise your hand if you think yes. Okay, raise your hand if you think no. Okay. If you say no, why do you say no? Because it said in the book, okay? Why does it say in the book that that is not a function? Yes. Okay, very good. 
So our input or our domain of 54 and our input or our domain of 56, they each have two different range values. My output is different. You can't multiply or you can't perform the same operations to the same number and get two different answers. Okay? Mathematically, that doesn't work. If that happens, then you did something wrong, correct? Yep. Yes. Yeah. So we know that doesn't work. What? I didn't hear you. What? I said you. <laughs> Just you? Okay. So, we can't have the same domain have different range values. It's not a function. What about example B? Yes. You say yes. Why is it yes? Because there's only each number is paired up with another one, and it's not like each number isn't used more than once. Okay. So each domain has only one range? Um. <laughs> it's a function. It says it in the book. <laughs> each domain is value is each domain value is paired with one range value. So each domain has only one range? Okay. So if I asked you to put it in your own words, how could you tell me that in your own words? <coughs> yes, ma'am. The domain is used more than once for me. The domain doesn't have more than one range that it could connect to. Very good. The domain doesn't have more than one range that it could connect to. Absolutely. Good job. <laughs> You're on a roll today, aren't you? Yes. Okay. <laughs> By which part? I'm wrong. Everything. Like, I'm exactly Okay. So the domain. What is the domain? <laughs> the domain is a set of numbers that you put into a function. Okay. The function is what happens. What is happening? <laughs> Right now, it doesn't matter what's happening. Right now, we're trying to figure out if we put something in, if we have something, okay, and we know that something's going to happen to it, will we only get one result? If the answer is yes, then that's a function. If the answer is no, then it's not. So we only get one answer is a function? Correct. But how is that a function? Now, here's the thing. Our functions don't have to be linear. That means they don't have to be in a straight line. So we can be wavy and curvy. We can look like a letter U. Okay? We can look like a letter U. We can look like a weird U, with the points and stuff. That's like a V. This is a U. Look. Okay? I, would, I tried. And I just did that for our, the whole world to see. Yes. <laughs> so. Oh yes. Yeah. Do it. Yes. No. <laughs> do it. So. Our line, our function, does not have to produce a line when it's graphed. And most functions don't produce a line when they're graphed. We have a special word for those, and that's called a linear function. Okay. But as long as each x value on a graph has only one y value, it's a function. Sound fair? Okay. So, we've looked at what this might look like if we had a set of ordered pairs. We looked at what this looks like in a table. Now I want you guys to look at um, page 385. We're looking at example two. Now, I have asked you guys to bring in graph paper throughout at some point this week. Try to get some graph paper. Hold, hold on. Hold on. All right, we're going to need graph paper. What we, there's a very cool test that can be done to make sure that something is a function when it is graphed. Okay? So, when something is graphed, we have what's called a vertical line test. And what that means is, is that if we have a vertical line, it means a line that goes up and down,
and you can put it through any and all points of our graph, and it never touches more than one point, then that is a function. If it does pass more than one point, then it's not a function. Can you like draw that on the board? Absolutely. So, let's say that we had a coordinate plane. And here's the other thing for the vertical line test, the actual points don't matter. So, I'm going to draw a couple things. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. What? Uh, coaster first. If I put a vertical line at all of these points, do I ever hit green more than twice? Yes. 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 I hit this I hit this green more than twice? Yes. yes. No. Apparently not that same green for the color. Okay, I'm looking at the lime green. Just lime green. Do I hit lime green more than once? Yes. yes. <laughs> At this point right here, I hit lime green more than once? Yes. yes. No, no, no. No, she's talking about like, um, like in a line. Like, not just like touching. Does my ruler hit lime green more than one time at that point? No. no. At this point right here, does it hit no, lime green no. more than once? Oh, no. No. What? I'm confused. I don't know. Listen. Listen. The vertical line test says that if I choose any vertical line for that particular graph, I will only hit that graph one time. So, with the lime green roller coaster, does it hit more than once? No. 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 More than once. No. Yes. Okay, if it's because of the arrow, it doesn't count. So, is that a function? No. Yes. 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 Stop. Because if my answer to the vertical line test is always no, then we pass the vertical line test, which says that yes, it is a function. Okay? So, my lime green is a function. Woohoo. Alright, somebody choose another color. Yes, ma'am. That greenish color. The darker green? Yeah. Okay. The dark green. There's a kid outside the classroom. What? No. <laughs> she called people names. Why she even looked out? 
There's nobody, it's just a ghost. <laughs> this one. I will address it in a minute. Alright, this upside down U right here. That's what we're looking at. Does it pass more than no. once? No. 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 Is it a function? Yes. Yes. Alright. I need another color. Wait. Yes, ma'am. Can I have a question? Purple. Purple. The C or the line? Line. The C. Okay. Yes. Which question? So, if it's not straight, or if the if the ruler doesn't um, go on it completely, it's not correct. No. So what happens is, if I can put multiple vertical lines through, and I only hit my graph one time, then it is a function. In that one point. Right here. In that, in, in that color, so most of the time you're not going to have a whole bunch in one graph, okay? So if we are just looking at the green squiggly, the green squiggly is a function because the vertical line only went through one point at a time. It only crosses through at one place. Okay, but let's, let's look at the letter C. Okay. Did I hit at more than one place? Yes. yes. Not function. So it is not a function. Oh, that's what you mean. Right, because it hits here and here at the same time. So it is not a function. All right. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry. Because most of the time you'll only be given one set at a time to look at. So, all right. Hold on. Hold on. She's saying it. Let's let's go back. Okay. If we have this by itself, the brown is my coordinate plane, the pink is my graph. When I do the vertical line test, does it hit more than one point at a time? Uh, no. Nobody get out with a looking. Yes. No. Yes. No. What does it hit? It's the it hits the It hits the bottom one. It hits it once. Okay. One time. The brown it's is showing your axes. Your x axis and your y axis. Okay, so if I put it here, where does it hit twice? The top half? The brown and the pink? Oh, no, it doesn't. The brown doesn't matter. Brown, is the X brown doesn't matter. Okay. It only hits the pink once. Because we have to show that it's on a coordinate plane. Let's talk about how when the line separated, the pink hit right there and the pink hit right Okay, but it. In a single vertical line, it only hits once. Yeah. Okay? Yes, ma'am. So you can put as many vertical lines there as you want, but as long as each vertical line only hits one time, it's a function. Okay? All right. It gets a little bit more complex, but for how like this gonna help us in later lives? Like, what type of job? Because quality control. What? Making sure that what you expect to happen is what happens. All right. Let's look at one more example. Okay.
kind of does. Yeah. It, it does. All right. Now. Remember when we talked about when we were graphing inequalities, open circles and closed circles? Okay. And the open circle meant that it approached that point, but it wasn't that number. Remember? And the closed circle said it could be that number. Okay. That comes into play here. Because if these are both closed circles, then what just happened? It was Right, then it's not a function, we just failed, right? However, if that's an open circle and that's a closed circle, guess what? Then it's a function. Because this part can approach my, my vertical line, but it cannot be on my vertical line, and the open circle tells me that. So it's a function. So. If you have an open circle and a closed circle at the same point, you're okay. It's a function. If there are two open circles, then that's called a disjoint set. That means that that means that the data that you have has gaps, and that's okay. So it's still a function. It's still a function. So when they're both closed and they match up, it's not a function. Because our graph doesn't have to fail the vertical line test at every point, but if at any point it fails, it's not a function. So, according to this one here, in the books, it would be non-function? Correct. So, if you look at example two, number two on page 385, that is not a function because both circles are filled in. So, it fails the vertical line test. So if they're not both filled in, then it's good. Please listen. So example two, number two, that's what we were discussing up here. All right. In the example in your book, <coughs> all the points are filled in. Okay, that means that when you take, when you look at that vertical line test, does it hit two points at the same time? Yes. Yes, so then is it a function? No. No. Good. Good, that means that it is not a function. In this example where one is open and one is not, this is a function. If they were both open, is it a function? No. That's yes. Yes. Right, it would be a disjointed set. Wait, so if both are closed and they're not, they Correct. won't work, and if they're both open and they won't work? Correct. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're trying to make this a little bit harder than it has to be. Probably. Okay. So, I need you to listen for a minute. We're going to close our mouths, open up our ears. Ready? Each X value only gets one Y value. If our, if our X, which is our domain, if that gets paired with more than one thing, then it is not a function. Not a function. If everything matches up, you know, one to one, we're good to go. Okay. Um, that is where we're going to stop today. We will do the second part of this lesson tomorrow. Thank you very much.